Hey, ladies. I thought, okay, I posted something on Facebook and only one person responded. So guess what? We're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, but I think it's worth talking about tonight because I feel like I've heard it a couple of places. Um, and so I know Lauren, she's actually on here, is like the queen of this. But talking about how to keep our vegetables fresh. Um, I hate, I just opened my like crisper drawer and I was like, oh shit, I got those two things of asparagus in their crop. They've been in there for like ever. <laughs> um, but they're actually still good, <laughs> which I'm surprised. Um, I know Lauren's like the queen of it. Um, and, I, and I feel like for myself, a lot of times the thing that sometimes is, is like foregoed off my plate is vegetables. Cause I'm like, shit, I don't have a vegetable cooked. Like, or I don't have a vegetable. Um, and so I think learning how to store them properly and store them so they last a long time is a big deal. Lauren, are you in the bathtub? <laughs> oh, be careful. Love and lower, girl. <laughs> Why not? This is what she does on Wednesday nights. Okay. <laughs> I oh, Leah, I'm sorry. I can't do the call anymore. I have my tub time planned. <laughs> That's cute. Love it. Got it on here for you, Natika. This is all for you, babe. <laughs> I like. Look at those shoulders. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Lauren. <laughs> Teach you to ever show up in the bathtub again. <laughs> Be careful with the mirror. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Make sure that you're not stepping over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Wednesday night's always good for a laugh. <laughs> we talked about this in the Ohana group today too, actually. Well, and maybe that's why Virginia actually posted it. I, I posted something on Facebook like, hey, if anyone has any topics and she posted it. And it, and it just kind of got me thinking because a couple other people has mentioned to me like, I don't have any vegetables. I went to get this and it was bad. Um, so hi, Teresa, hi. Um, Nicole, um, we are talking about how to keep vegetables fresh. And I'm not, I learned this in the FitMe community um, and it literally was like, and it's changed my world is, you know, when you buy spring mix in the plastic, in the plastic container, the, the big or small, like the spinach comes in or whatever, is to open it up, put a paper towel on the top and store it upside down. Like that literally, I don't know why, like changed my life <laughs> because it, all the moisture seeps down, the paper towel grabs it and it doesn't just get so soggy and wet in one day. Um, Lauren, I know, loves to soak her vegetables in vinegar, sure. Um, but I find that if I don't wash my vegetables until I use them, they last longer. The same goes with fruit, like strawberries. Have you ever noticed if you wash it all, all your strawberries, if you wash them all and put them in the fridge, like I love the thought of it because it's like we're planning ahead, but they go bad faster. Um, so that's what I've noticed. Although with lettuce, like I said, I wash that in advance if I buy a head of lettuce because it's just easier. Else I won't eat it. And then I'll do the paper towel trick. If I wash it, if I buy a head of lettuce and I wash it and ch chop it, and chopping it, not with a serrated knife, but with a straight edge knife, the serrated knife kind of bruises it. Um, and then I'll put it in a Ziploc with a paper towel and then the paper towel has to be on the bottom. You can't put it in with a paper towel on top, it'll catch any water. That's a serrated knife. I don't even know what you talk about at this what point. What a serrated knife is? Um, it has the bumps on it. Yeah, it has the bumps. Not straight. Like a steak knife, but bigger? Like this, can you see that? So see that's that? what we should use or should not use? Should not use. You should oh. use a straight, just a straight edge knife. I've also heard that cutting with plastic like that's or nice. tearing it um, will keep it from turning brown. I've heard that if you cut it with, with metal, and now I don't have any plastic knives, so I cut mine with metal, but that's just something I've heard. Oh, I haven't heard that. I have heard that you can cut hot brownies with a plastic knife and it won't like stick to the knife. That was also mind blowing, life changing. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
that's not that's very far from a vegetable <laughs> i know we've all had to make brownies for something at the last minute and then try to cut those suckers and they all <laughs> yeah i know that none of us ever eat brownies anymore either right leah right <laughs> <laughs> I know, seriously. Um, <laughs> seriously, Teresa, I totally. Um, so I wanna hear anybody else's ideas because I'm always down for how to score anything better because I try to buy for a long period of time. Hey, got this puppy. I try to buy for a long period of time and so it really actually makes me mad when like my vegetables won't last and I have to go back to the store. I don't have ideas, but I do have questions. Okay. That water thing is there any aftertaste of vinegar on whatever you're washing are we using vinegar on fruit and vegetables or just vegetables and has anybody bought or used that stuff they sell in a grocery store and is that not good because it has some processed something in it is that why we're doing the, the veggie wash is that what you're talking yeah. about i'm assuming i've never bought it but i see it in the vegetables in the produce section Laura Lynn mentioned it today. And so if Laura Lynn uses it, I think it's probably pretty clean. But I use vinegar because it's super cheap. You can buy like a gallon of it for like a dollar fifty. Yeah. I and I just splash some into a bowl or into the sink. I'm sorry, Leah. Nope, no, you go ahead. You're the vinegar girl. I'm not so much. Yeah, I and I just splash it. It doesn't take a take a lot. And no, it does not taste like vinegar. But I will say that, and I said this in the um, Ohana group today too, that if it's berries or like a soft fruit or vegetable, like porous, don't leave it in there for very long, like max five minutes, just rinse it around and then take them out and put them in a colander. You don't have to rinse them or anything. They don't taste like vinegar, but um, I found that like I can keep strawberries good in my fridge in a Ziploc bag for two weeks if I wash them with a the vinegar solution when I get home. Um, but stuff like celery, I let soak for a while and it won't hurt it. It soaks it up in those straws and make sure that there's clean water in like the straws of the plant. Um, and all their like hard things like grapes or uh, sugar snap peas, um, those you can let soak for a little bit. Um, I also buy the organic boxed um, greens. So I don't wash my greens at all. And I find that they last about two weeks too, two weeks also um, without washing them if they're the organic. So like spring mix, I buy organic, baby spinach and baby arugula, I buy organic. Um, I don't buy everything organic, but those things that, like it's a pain in the ass to dry lettuce. Like I cannot stand it. I don't have a salad spinner. Um, so I always buy those organic so I don't have to wash them. And I find that even without a paper towel, they last a while with a paper towel, they're like, they won't go bad, basically. I have never tried washing strawberries in vinegar. Every time I, that must be the trick. Because when I wash them regular, they go bad really fast. Yeah, with just water, like the vinegar kills the germs and helps get, like if there's pesticides on them, that the pesticides make it turn faster. What is I the did, ratio? Uh, Oh, sorry. Vinegar to water. Sorry. What is the ratio of vinegar to water when I'm rinsing my berries in a vinegar solution? If, if you have like a really big mixing bowl, like a cap full, if you clean, like I wash my sink and then fill my sink halfway and then I splash it like a big splash and it's probably like a quarter cup, but it's not a lot in a okay. lot of water, okay. like a tablespoon per gallon, maybe. I don't know. Oh, I washed some bell peppers and I did this. Clug, clug, clug. <laughs> yeah. That you know, might be like doing it. I did it's like, uh, I, um, it's like I went out and avoid <laughs> bear picking, um, strawberry picking this past summer. And they basically came home with like a bucket of strawberries. And um, I washed them in vinegar, but I think I may have let them sit too long, Lauren, because mm -hmm. they became mushy like yeah. they definitely um started to break down a lot quicker so mm -hmm. i ended up do like a quick frozen sorbet with them like the next day but mm -hmm. i definitely think i put a to <laughs> leah's point too much vinegar and then b let them sit too long 
Um, yeah. But one, one hack that I learned just recently, and it's probably not new to some of you ladies, is um, I usually eat a half of avocado with my salad throughout the day. And I always hate, I, I'm, I can't stand the brown parts mm-hmm. uh, when it turns brown. So I saw online that if you wrap the avocado in saran wrap and put it in the refrigerator and leave the pit in, it stays green. It doesn't turn brown in the refrigerator. And so do you kind of like suck the saran wrap close to the avocado? Because yeah. I have a problem all the time. My family, avocados are going bad. Yeah, I, you have to like almost make it like a, um, like the, 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 uh, the airtight. Mm-hmm. You do, I usually either, if I do it with the, a small Ziploc bag, I just make sure I get as much air out as I can. Or if I have saran wrap, I'll just make sure it's flush to the flesh of the avocado. And that keeps it for a few days. Like it doesn't turn brown at all. And same thing with guacamole. If you put it in a bowl and make sure it's in a flat um, level and push the saran wrap down to the surface of the guacamole, it'll stay green and not turn brown on the top. Hmm. And it's put yeah. in like a type um, container. I also use Ziploc bags and do that same thing that she's talking about. Like suck all the, I suck all the air out with my mouth or I like, you can stick a straw in the corner of it and suck the air out. Um, or, and I've also heard like lemon juice or lime juice on it, but I've never tried that. I tried that. Work. It turned brown a little bit slower. <laughs> okay. say yeah. It has but, to be a lot of lime. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. I just did the, I found that the, um, using the, um, the airtight wrap worked better than the lime juice. Yeah, that's a really good one. Um, somebody today was talking about potatoes and that she pre-prepped her potatoes for breakfast, sliced them up and cut them, kept them raw and, and stored them in a Ziploc with water in them so that they didn't turn brown. And then she threw them, just patted them, just lightly patted them dry and threw them in the air fryer for breakfast. And I thought that that was a really good idea. Oh, wow. That's genius. Yeah. Adding the water. That's, I would never have thought of like storing them in water in the fridge. Yeah. Although I put them in water, like for Thanksgiving, if I'm like prepping everything in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that's really smart. Yeah. I thought that was just a quick, quick, good, quick, fresh carb. Something, somebody else said something about potatoes. It might've been Laura Lynn about keeping your potatoes and onions together and how like, I guess the onions let off a gas that can rot your potatoes faster. And I didn't know that. I've been keeping my potatoes and onions in my cabinet. Cause you know, you gotta keep them in like a dark, dry place uh, and they'll keep longer potatoes and onions both, but I haven't separated them. So that was very interesting information. That is interesting. The other interesting fact about onions, um, like, don't take this for history or, you know, don't take this for science, but I've read that they capture germs very easily. And so you should not pre-cut your onions and store them in the fridge. And it's same with like, if you're at a, um, if you're at like a barbecue and the potato salad's out and someone eats it and they get sick, they're like, oh, it must've been the mayo. In reality, it really could have been the onion. Um, like the, in like the 1800s, they used to put them beside people who were sick their bed so that they would absorb the sickness. Um, so I don't know. I So ever since I read that, I never pre-chop onions. But Paige, this has nothing to do with storing onions, but <laughs> Paige has, um, she changed my world with the onion chopping technique too. It's like you cut the onion in half and then you make little slivers throughout it, but not actually leaving a little piece here. And then you just chop it like this and it's chopped. Um, and so that takes away, it makes it so easy that I don't feel like I need to like pre-chop my onions anymore. So I thought that that was like a interesting, <laughs> interesting yeah, fact. It's a, cool, it's a cool trick. I, I've tried it too this past um, couple of weeks since I was on the page. It was really, it's, it makes it easier, quicker. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean, it doesn't make it feel like such a pain in the ass. Mm-mm. But that makes sense with the gases and the... I, I, I'm 
my potatoes and onions right now are right next to each other. Yeah. It actually reminded me after I take this bath, I got to go to separate them. <laughs> Everybody set their reminders right now to separate their potatoes and their onions. <laughs> and put them in a cabinet. If you leave them on the counter or out somewhere, put them away from the light. So I have a question. Um, I've been eating a lot of frozen steamables. So like the asparagus, the sweet potatoes, green bean. I've gone like pretty much frozen because I really don't know what I'm doing with the fresh stuff. And I don't want to throw it away because I feel like it's a waste. It's a waste. So I do a lot of frozen and this, just the ones that you steam them in the microwave in the bag. Mm-hmm. um so I, I that's fine. Uh, yeah that's fine I yeah so. I do that literally every day I okay. have like my entire outside freezer is full of like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and green beans in the freezer bags okay because that's what mine is too and my husband's like how many sweet potatoes do you need <laughs> <laughs> I'm like well whenever they sub it for something that I don't want I'm gonna get it while they have it so right yeah, they like all of a sudden we're out of Brussels sprouts everywhere. And I'm like, don't play like you guys actually eat Brussels sprouts. Knock it off. <laughs> all right. I have a, it's not a storage suggestion, but I don't know how many people may have seen the post I made about how I like to make my, I called them. <laughs> I call them quinoa bowls, but really it can be whatever you want to put in there. So it's just veggie protein bowl. And I make seven um, on Sunday. And so one of the things I found through trial and error is that if you want to use cucumbers, um, that's great, but it's best if you take the seeds out because otherwise they get mushy. And then um, it was pretty disgusting. One time I had to like fish them out and hope that they didn't ooze onto other things. Um, or if you have a Trader Joe's and they sell those mini cucumbers, oh my gosh, those are my favorite. Mm. But if I get mini cucumbers at my local Fred Meyer grocery store, those things go bad so fast. So anyway, so if you're going to use cucumber, which I love, I just take a little spoon and I just, um, gently scrape out the little seeds on the inside. And then it lasts for those seven lunches that I prepack. Yeah. That's That's genius. I didn't know that. The know, English I... cucumbers, the long ones, mm-hmm. those are more hardy and they, the, uh, the seed area or the middle doesn't break down. So I guess they're similar in texture to the smaller cucumbers. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I don't buy the regular cucumbers for that exact reason. Um, yeah. And I like the, the, the firmer texture overall of the English cucumber. So um, that works as well. You can pre-cut those for a full week without any issue. Yeah, those are my favorite. My my um, daughter likes those too, but I don't know. This might be oversharing, but I hate purchasing cucumbers because I mean, how can you? How do you go about telling if they're um, too squishy? It's like an avocado, kind of like it's <laughs> awful. Okay, and squeezing this means like how she has the whole <laughs> is a lot different than feeling up a whole bunch of cucumbers. <laughs> oh, I I will violate those cucumbers. Like, I don't oh my her. god, that Same lady. Game. <laughs> I have Same no crazy lady it's, in the department. Like you just squeeze awful. the ends, just yeah. squeeze the ends, and if there's any give, I put it back. So yes, I'm the one filling up all the cucumbers. Right? It's <laughs> awful. And section. then it makes me think, like, what are people thinking? Like, what is she using that? For? <laughs> oh, I don't care. They can think whatever they want. I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. Or maybe I'm you're so happy to have a cucumber right here. Just kidding, guys. Anyway, Lauren, <laughs> and I know. <laughs> Sorry, this is recorded. <laughs> yes, I'm just kidding. I definitely do not have a cucumber. Fun fact about mushrooms: um, <laughs> don't wash them ahead of time. I think I had heard that before, but at the event, I was like, we were like pre- prepping everything. Yeah, yeah. why did yeah, you stop me? Them. I don't know. Thought you knew something I didn't know. <laughs> I washed them. I didn't. I washed them and they were disgusting. I had to pick them all out and throw them all away. It was so nasty. I'm, I'm lucky that I was able to like salvage the rest of it. So don't also, wash your mushrooms <laughs> ahead of time. I with mushrooms, like when you're cooking, don't, oops, Lord, what did I do? 
Oh, damn safety. Oh, sorry. I almost just flew off my treadmill. Um, <laughs> uh, you also don't salt them until the end of cooking because it makes them turn rubber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Don't I, I wait till like you're basically turning, taking them off the heat to salt them because it makes the texture very rubbery. Wow, I had n I didn't know that. That's awesome. I didn't know that either. The yeah. other thing do not. So go ahead, Leanne. Sorry. The other thing about mushrooms is when you're picking out mushrooms, make sure that the whole gill underneath is intact. If it's broken at all, leave it alone because that means it's already starting to break down. Oh, that's good information. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So the gill needs to be like, that's like what, when it's intact still to the stem, then it's good. Is that with portobellas too? Probably not because the gill's different. I'm thinking about like white mushro button mushrooms or like the, the brown, what are those called? Cremini? Yeah, maybe those. Yeah. Where the actual gill is like, it, it's like a cap and then it has like a white Feeling if the gills exposed, I guess it would be. Then don't buy it. Yeah, I, I, um, when I used to oh, also about salting, it made me think of this. Don't salt um, raw veggies if they're just going to sit for a little while, um, because it'll seep all the water out of them, and they'll get mushy, and there will be like a bag full of water. And I had, um. I used to meal prep like all my lunches ahead of time and there for a little bit, I was like taking frozen veggies and just sticking them in my box without cooking them first because I was gonna microwave it later. And then I salted them one time and it was just like vegetable soup in that little corner of the box, <laughs> it was nasty. That's good to know too. I mean, salt does break things down. So I guess it kind of makes sense. So Laura Lynn on the Ohana call, she also said, don't leave anything out. Oh, no, 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 other, other way around. She listed off all these things that you should leave out on your counter. The only thing I leave out are bananas. I will take an avocado out if I want it to ripen. But other than that, I stick everything in my fridge. I'm afraid that if I left it out, it would become, it would, it would um, get, you know, old and mushy too fast. Mm -hmm. What kind of things did she say to leave out? Tomatoes. So, yeah. Citrus and those, fruit. It, it has to do with like the way that the cold um, affects the integrity of the fruit, but it does mm -hmm. keep it like if you're not caring about like a nice juicy beefsteak tomato tasting its peak tomato-ness and you just need it to last a week and a half, you can put it in the fridge. I mean, it's not going to hurt it. Yeah. It will make it last longer. I put my tomatoes in the fridge unless I buy them and I'm like about to eat them raw or um, put them on like a burger like that night for dinner or even like the next night. It'll keep for like a couple days on the counter and be fine. But don't like if you need it to last, like I have all my grape tomatoes in a Ziploc bag in the fridge and I washed them. Um, but like apples and, and citrus fruit, that'll last. Apples last forever. Like yeah. you can leave apples out, like they'll last weeks. <clears throat> That's so, why they're, win they're like winter crop. If you mm -hmm. know winter crop things last longer because it's kind of meant to last through the winter. Well, I have a confession. I've never washed <laughs> a fruit or a vegetable. Okay, sometimes I'll rinse like, something just underwater and I'll wipe it off with a paper towel. But that's like on occasion, but normally, and, and I do as I'm shopping, LOL, same Teresa. I do when I'm shopping and think about the cucumber thing. How many cucumbers did I feel up? And I obviously am not purchasing all those cucumbers. So now someone's going to take that cucumber home and they're going to eat it with my fingerprints on it. But I don't, I don't do it. I mean, is that so disgusting now that I think about it? Like, I'll just cut right into an apple. You're still alive. So. I'm still alive. I probably have the best immune system out of all y'all. <laughs> so as uh, what I would recommend as someone who's worked in the grocery store. Who is you, this? This is Nicole. Speaking? Nicole, okay. Nicole, I used to be a store manager. Uh -huh. um, you want to wash um, <laughs> your produce. And your fruit, because I can tell no you. No more. <laughs> yeah. No, tell me, tell me, so it will motivate you, me to do it. 
that the uh, the racks that they oh. sit on probably have not been cleaned that year Ooh. or within the last month, especially uh. when they have those water sprayers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, in the produce section. So I, I, I would just recommend it's not necessarily just the people that are touching it. It's everything that it touches as well as the workers who are stocking it out. So yeah, wash it. Yeah. Plus, <laughs> unless it's organic, it definitely has pesticides on it. Yeah. And and like apples are covered in like a thin coating of wax to keep them looking shiny. Um, in fact, when you soak apples in vinegar water, like when you take them out, they look kind of weird because they have like a whitish film from the wax like melting off of them. Um, they taste fine. The only fruit slash vegetable that I don't wash again, like unless I'm buying pre-bagged salad or um like organic you know lettuces um and again I don't buy everything organic I I I don't wash my bananas but I do immediately wash my hands after I eat a banana or touch the skin that's what they say about like melons or anything you cut into is wash even though you're not eating the rind wash it because when you slice the knife through it Mm -hmm. it oh my god I should be dead (laughs) So, Linda, for me, you're so lucky. <laughs> you're like, you're going to be like a crop, the alligator of, <laughs> like, you're going to be her hundredth birthday. <laughs> That's right. You're going to be like, what's girl, the you secret? Watch out. Betty what's White. the secret? Don't wash your fruits and veggies. Yeah. And bourbon. <laughs> um, one thing I will say, um, uh, I grew up eating like fresh collard greens from my grandparents' garden. And um, so if you buy greens, whether it's mustard or turnip, they tend to be a bit more sandy. Mm. So, but a way to wash fresh greens is similar to what Lauren recommended Mm. on the berries. But instead of soaking with vinegar, you put salt in the water and put it in like this and submerge it. And you kind of like slosh it around and that helps get the sand off the greens. So it won't, you won't have a sandy pot of greens Collards aren't as bad, but turnip greens and mustard greens are much more sandy. So um, it's best to soak them probably like two or three times to make sure you get all the sand and grit off before cooking and prepping. That's really interesting because I've definitely had gritty greens before and I never thought of it. Like I didn't realize that was like... (laughs) So I live where there's a lot of farmland and... um, there are no porter potties near the farms. Mm. So, um, and these people work long shifts, picking whatever it is. That Same as well. Wash so, your veggies, Linda. <laughs> wash your veggies, Linda. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> it mass produce. I'm sure that they're picking on mass, you know, fields. Um, so their fertilizer (laughs) is not processed fertilizer. (laughs) So So does everyone use this vinegar solution thing or what do you do? I'm, I'm confess I'm more like you, like I'm washing my apple, like just rinsing it underwater and like wiping it on my pants kind of, but I always buy organic apples, um, just because I hate that wax. I, I do have a dedicated, um, y'all are going to like probably barf, but I have a sponge. I know. I know. It's a clean one. It was brand new and I use it just, I let, I do scrub my um, sweet potatoes because I, 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 you know, I know that there's going to be dirt for some reason. I don't know why that's the only one I do, but I scrub that one and I only use that sponge. I let it dry out just for veggies. Anyway, before I put it in the microwave or whatever. But okay, anyway, I don't wash my sweet potatoes, but I don't (laughs) like the skin. I don't eat the skin. I just, I don't wash. I don't do anything with my sweet potatoes. Ever since Leah taught me that I don't have to pierce my sweet potatoes before I bake them, she changed my whole life. And I never even, I barely touch them. They just go on a pan and bake. You don't have to pierce pierce them. I stab them with a fork. You don't have to. It's going to save my life. Nope. No, they don't. Potatoes, 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 I am down with uh, I, I I just realized I rub a lot of fruit around, but 
I rub them down with oil <laughs> before I put them before I put them in the oven, and that helps keep them um, the moisture in. And it actually, if you want to eat the skin, it makes it you know nice and kind of tender. But I don't stab it either. I've never. I've only done that when I've cooked them in the microwave. You have okay, to. Okay, let's go back to my original potatoes. question. So, besides the vinegar solution, which is a very small amount, I understand. Or I know you can buy. I don't know. Is it in the produce section? The I fruit think, and vegetable wash. Is I that are those the only two things that all that you guys are using? I use dish soap. I use a scrubber too. I have a scrubber. A scrubber I and use dish soap. Water on apples to get the wax mm -hmm. off. So, like boiling water helps get the wax off apples. Okay. I don't use dish soap on anything. I mean, if it's not, I mean, maybe on apples or like citrus fruit rinds, if I'm going to grate, you know, zest them. Mm -hmm. But I like dish soap would get, if, it, if anything is at all porous, it would get in that. So unless it's like a hard fruit or veggie. I you guys are add like, like serious oh, minutes like, on my food um, prep. Sorry. Yeah, I use yeah. dish soap for watermelon. Yeah, I was gonna say for like the of that just for the reason. Can you imagine uh, how like I want to eat watermelon? <laughs> yeah, only because I work in a grocery store, so I've seen how the fruit and stuff looks when it comes in and the trucks that it's on. So, um, yeah. all right, I guess I got to get me a grocery job. Actually, you know what? I've had one, but I just didn't deal with the food. I just did the carts. All right, it's very glamorous. Okay, ladies, it's 634. <laughs> you just take one thing away from this call. And think about it like that. <laughs> next week, though, I was thinking it would be a free-for-all. So if you guys are going to tune in next week, find something about food, a topic on food that you want to talk about, and we'll just kind of like throw out some questions. I think that um, I think that would be kind of fun and, and something different. And then we'd all get a question at, answered that we want the answer to. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay. Awesome call, ladies. You're always, I love the Wednesday night call. It's fun. <laughs> it is. <laughs> night, ladies. Good yeah. Night. Have a great one.